next person signed up is uh, John S. Quarterman, Mr. John S. Quarterman. According to FERC's own guidelines for environmental assessments, that's the very first question that the pipeline company is supposed to answer. Is there any need for this project? And the only assertion would seem that the need for this project do come from the pipeline company and or car life, two companies which stand to profit from this pipeline. Okay, so that's one part of the big picture. But the second part of the big picture, which you heard alluded to earlier, is are there any alternatives? That's the second thing that that guideline document requires pipeline companies to address. Now, it's kind of interesting that in Minnesota, about a month ago, the judge ruled that solar power is a better deal for rate payers than natural gas and ordered Excel to go with solar instead of natural gas. That's in Minnesota, a thousand miles north of the Sunshine State. I can uh, provide the citation, although as you've heard recommended before, you can Google for it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And um, the pipeline company did file the document with the requested name, which I uh, have here. So I actually need to comments on it, which I won't even read all of them. You can find it online. It's uh, Draft Resource Report 10, Alternatives, otherwise known as RR10. You can find it either on FERC's filing system under PF 14-1, where also the pipeline company files documents related to this project. So FERC does indeed have a place on its website for this project. And, um, or you can find it on the Spectrobusters site. I forgot to say, I'm also a board member of Spectrobusters, which is opposed to this project. Um, right, so this RRTN, has things like it says, in 2010, renewable energy sources contributed only 8% share of U.S. power. Okay, that's very interesting, but 2010, according to FERC's own numbers on solar power, solar power production in the U.S. is growing about 65% per year, according to FERC's own numbers on FERC's own website. And that means it doubles in about 2.5 years, which means this is more than 2.5 years later, so it's at least, two point, at least twice as much. And according to FERC's own numbers, indeed, there is. And it's been continuing this rate of increasing deployments of solar power by 60 plus percent for years, and it's likely to continue it for some time. So, uh, <coughs> to the extent that John Wellinghoff, the former chair of FERC until recently, who was the chair, <coughs> predicted only a few months ago that solar is going to be producing more power in the U.S. than any other source within 10 years. 
So, yeah, we have a document here that cites renewable energy in 2010 with nothing about growth rates. And, and I, I promise not to read all of it, it just goes on about that. It talks about wind, it says nothing about offshore wind, which anybody who's looked into it knows the best source of wind power near Georgia or North Florida is off the coast. It uh, claims that solar would require more land than a natural gas pipeline. Now, I did very conservative number here for 50 feet wide by 500 miles, about 3,000 acres. But then we heard here, I think the number was 13,000 acres for a pipeline. I mean, if you took the, you, know, you could produce a lot of solar power on that. In particular, the estimate in this document here says it would take, uh, I'm not finding the number right here, but it's less than 13,000 acres to produce just as much from solar power. And remember, those acres don't have to be cleared. Most of them are on rooftops or an already cleared land. It just goes on and on like that. Uh, oh yes, the uh, majority of the area on the natural gas pipeline would revert to more original conditions. So those 300-year-old trees are going to magically regrow. People who do forestry, who can't do forestry anymore, well, that's just going to magically get fixed. And they say that solar is not as reliable. What about the explosions like on Transco pipeline? In 2011, that's the same pipeline that Sable Trail wants to connect to, one of the three you just heard talked about. It blew up. Flames 100 feet up, heard more than 30 miles away, left the crater 50 feet wide, destroyed 65 acres of trees, fired five, five acres of soil into pottery, and launched a 43 foot pipe section 490 feet away. And that's far from the only one. And it also claims, this, this RR10 document claims, solar would take longer. Well, consider, for example, the Solar Hill, the uh, Sand Hill Solar Farm in Elm City. North Carolina, which you can see from I-95, that took nine months from changing local ordinances to turning on the power. And that's about the longest I've ever heard of for a solar project. <coughs> and so what the, uh, the, the conclusion of this R10 is the land requirements needed by the solar power to generate the amount of energy equivalent to that satisfies the purpose of ground impacts required to solar power compared to natural gas. Solar power is not a viable option. That's what the whole argument is based on. Solar would take no land. <clears throat> Someone actually accepted this as a serious argument. <clears throat> if, this is, if this kind of disinformation about <coughs> wind and solar, <clears throat> the polite word, is what FERC is going on to justify eminent domain for this pipeline, is a very flimsy <coughs> justification. Very flimsy. So, It, then there's the whole environmental issue for which, let me, uh, let me read from a statement by the Sierra Club. The Sierra Club chapters of Florida, Georgia, and Alabama just put out the statement today. And in part it reads, the proposed pipeline would cut a wide swath through pristine land with resulting negative critical wildlife habitat, invaluable wetlands, long leaf pine forests, the fragile and irreplaceable Floridian aquifers, streams, rivers, and springs, and private property rights. Furthermore, expanded reliance on fracked natural gas only serves to feed the increasingly destructive effects of drilling forward tracking of shale deposits that have destroyed drinking water resources in entire communities across the country. And the Sunshine State would be much better with energy efficiency measures and solar capacity than increasing its dependence on natural gas. Okay, now we're, we're led to believe by FERC that this environmental review will determine whether there are adverse environmental effects. Yet we can't see the RFP by which the contractor was selected. We can't see the proposal that the contractor produced. We don't know anything about the contractor's background except well, what we just heard. Why should we believe this environmental review? So, I'm opposed to this pipeline for all these reasons, starting with the three biggest questions of do we need it? <coughs> no. Is there a better alternative? Yes, solar energy. 
Will it adversely affect the environment? Yes. None of these questions have been adequately even addressed by FERC, much less answered. This FERC should reject this pipeline, and it should never have even gotten this far. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next speaker is Mr. James Wagner. <coughs>